This is Lake Como, one of the most beautiful destinations to visit in Italy. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my recent trip to Lake Como and what we did in one day. I'll be sharing some of the best places to visit, where you can find delicious food, how to get around and many more things. I'll also refer to a few different links and you can find them in the description below. Given Italy is so beautiful and there's so much to see, I tried to squeeze in Lake Como as part of a wider road trip for seven days. In this trip, we started off in Lake Como, then make our way to Lake Garda, through to the Dolomites and end in Venice. If you're interested in those areas as well, do consider subscribing so then you can see my travel tips and experiences from them as well. But anyways, you're here for Lake Como, so let's go. Lake Como is situated in Northern Italy and the shape of it is like an upside down Y shape with beautiful towns and buildings scattered around. It's also the deepest lake in Italy at 1,345 feet and also one of the deepest lakes in Europe. The most popular towns to visit are in the center. On the east, you have Verena, in the middle you have Bellagio and on the west you have Menagio. We'll come back to them later. The closest airport to Lake Como is Milan Malpensa. At this airport there are two common ways to get to Lake Como. The first way is public transport via train and then ferry. You take two trains to get yourself to Como, the town, which is at the bottom of Lake Como. Once you get to Como, there's really nice restaurants to go to, but if you're trying to get to the center of Lake Como, you're probably waiting for a ferry. The ferries to Bellagio, Menagio, and Verena probably take around 45 minutes when you get there. And if you're looking for the ferry timetables across Lake Como, I'll put them in the description below as well. If you're trying to get to one of the central towns in Lake Como from the airport, this will take you probably about three to four hours. The alternative option is to hire a car or get a taxi. We hired a car this time around because this was part of a wider road trip and because of the shape of Lake Como, it's more convenient to get around by ferry once you're in the center. And even your car at your accommodation means that you don't have to worry about parking either. From the airport, it takes about an hour and a half to get to somewhere like Verona. So if you're evaluating between hiring a car or taking public transport, it's really a time versus cost decision. We made it into Verona as the sun was setting, so it was quite a nice scenic drop. The restaurant we ate at is called Il Cavatappi. You can find it right in the center of Verona, just on the side of an alleyway. It's run by these two guys who I think are brothers and we came here four years ago and it was awesome, which is why I had to come back. We went for three pastas, so you had the Oreo Chetti, you had a courgette and tomato pasta and then we also had a fish pasta as well. Verona is one of the most beautiful places to visit in Lake Como, but I'd say it's one of the more quiet towns which works in its favour. The best views of Verona in my opinion are when you're getting the ferry from Bellagio to Verona. After dinner, we need to get from Verona to Osuccio, which is on the west side. And a useful thing to know is the ferries do run at night in Bellagio, Menagio, Verona and Cadenabia, but they are very infrequent, saying about every one hour. But you can check those times out online or at the ferry stops where they do show the times of the next ferries. This morning, we're headed to Bellagio. The ferry ride from Leno to Bellagio is about 20 minutes. On this ferry ride, you'll pass through some of the most famous and beautiful spots in Lake Como. First, you have Grand Hotel Tremezzo, which has that iconic pool on the front. Then you'll stop at Villa Carlotta, which is huge, and the gardens there are exquisite. And soon after, we made it to Bellagio. <laughs> Once we arrived to Bellagio, there was one viewpoint which we instantly wanted to see. We started by climbing some of these well-known stairs. The Salita Cerebelloni is essentially a staircase which goes up to the top where the viewpoint is. It's essentially one of the most photographed spots in Lake Como. The viewpoint's amazing because you have the buildings going towards the center where you can see the waterfront. Hey, how's it going? We're in Italy now, we're in Lake Como. As you can probably hear by the waves, uh, it gets quite busy in the afternoon, so we did try to go in the morning and we were so tired from the rest of our trips because we've now been to Madeira and we've now been to Valencia that we just needed some extra rest time. And so we woke up a bit later and still the sun's out. There was supposed to be a bunch of thunderstorms, uh, which we've been worried about, but the weather's holding up. So that's been really good so far. After seeing the viewpoint, we then just strolled around the shops where you can see handbags, ties, biscotti, all sorts of things, which is really nice. Following that, we also grabbed some gelato, which was nice as well. When they got to lunchtime, there's plenty of food places to eat in Bellagio and there are some of the touristy spots right in the center. 
we decided to make a venture a bit further out, about 10 minutes away to a pizza shop called Coppola Chef and Bakery. I was really excited to try these Neapolitano pizzas, but they're only available from 6 p.m. So that was quite sad. On our way back, we passed a hotel called Hotel Belvedere where we stopped for lunch. They had a really nice terrace and it was just quite nice to have this intimate lunch when you're away from the crowds. They had a great selection of bread. We had some risotto and some gnocchi, which went down really well. It was more expensive than the pizza we were expecting to have earlier on, but it was a really nice meal with a beautiful view. So we couldn't complain. These towns are generally quite small, so you can visit them over a leisurely day or as fast as an hour or two. We've been really nice in Bellagio today, and what we're looking to do is go back to Leno, where we're staying, to go see Villa Balbianello. Uh, we didn't book a ticket in advance, which was a bad idea, but we're going to hope that we can get there, so we'll see how that goes. Villa Balbianero is possibly one of the most famous spots to visit in Lake Como. It's a destination known for weddings, events, and also filming locations like Star Wars and also James Bond Casino Royale. From the ferry stop, we walked to Villa Balbianello, which takes about 25 minutes and it's on a slight incline, but the views are quite nice. There weren't any available at the time, but the alternative option is to get a water taxi, which I would recommend. It's 11 euros per person. You'll be taken near the ferry spot to round to Villa Balbianello through the back, which is really beautiful because you get to see the whole villa from afar, which is great. We avoided the big tours and crowds, which was quite nice, and we got there probably around 4.30, which was around closing time, which was great. This meant that we couldn't go see inside, but I'd seen it four years ago, and it is quite a cool experience. But instead, we just got to see the gardens, where, frankly, I think that's where the most beautiful stuff is. But the tour is worth doing, because you do get to hear about how the villa was developed, how it shifted between different owners, and I think that was quite interesting as well. A couple of cool things from memory are that the owner Guido Monzino restored the architecture in 1974 and he was actually the first Italian person to climb Mount Everest to the summit. The other thing that I thought was pretty cool was this mushroom shaped chi and the reason why it was shaped that way is so when you're looking at one of the bedrooms you would be able to continuously see the viewpoints rather than seeing this massive tree and so it's cut properly every November. If you come to Villa Balbinello there is one spot in the garden which is very famous to get a picture at and given that we were there at the end of the the day it was quieter which meant that we had the place to ourselves or almost there was actually a wedding shoot going on so we had to leave temporarily but then when we realized they were finished we made our way back and there was no one there which was a win for us it's quite a romantic and beautiful spot so i can understand why people get engaged and get married here we then got to our airbnb and relaxed and we then got changed for our evening meal but then suddenly the heavens opened up at this time, Italy was experiencing one of its worst floods in over a hundred years, and so the thunderstorms were continuously hitting throughout the week. So we're trying to go to dinner, and it's flooding, and there's thunderstorms in Lake Como. Well, there was lots of water gushing down and had to brave it to get to our car. My girlfriend took the lead as I was locking up the cottage, and in that moment, her foot unexpectedly went into deep water and she screamed. And after that, we were just glad that we made it to the car. We booked a restaurant called Ristorante Al Lago in Menagia, which sits in the Grand Hotel Victoria. The service was impeccable. From when we entered to when they took our coats and we sat down, they even had a separate table for my girlfriend to put her handbag on. But let's talk about what's important, the food. The bread selection to start, bueno. Neapolitano style pizza, super bueno. Pasta, again, really good. But the real showstopper here was the desserts. We ordered one milfue and one tiramisu, which came in a bowl, and both of them were just exceptional. It's a really great place to eat. Given that we were only here for a day and just in the evening, we didn't spend much time in Menagio. But like the other towns, it's just quite a nice place to go walk around, visit some shops, and most importantly, grab some gelato. This is just what we experienced in 24 hours, but if you do have more time, here's what I would recommend doing. The first thing is renting your own private boat. Finding these private boats can be found in some of the main towns, such as Bellagio, Menagio, Verona. There's quite a few of them. And I would recommend grabbing some speakers, some food and some drinks so that you can then go and have your own little mini party. It's my favorite thing to do on the lake because you're just in your own space and it's one of the most beautiful locations in the world. You can also get up and close to some of the most beautiful villas and just chill in your own time. Speaking of villas, we also drove past Chernobyl on the following day and there are two amazing villas here as well, Villa Urba and Villa Dest. You couldn't spend much time to visit Chernobyl and Como, but there were a ton of restaurants that I found during my research, which I've also linked below, 
which I would recommend because they just look amazing. But there is a restaurant I would recommend that I went to four years ago that's based in Bellagio, just outside the center. There's a restaurant called Mella, which has excellent fish, pasta, and also hospitality. To top it all off, they have a dog there, which has also been on Italian Netflix. If that's not cool, then I don't know what it is. If you enjoyed this video, do consider subscribing to my channel, where I'll be sharing similar videos from my recent trips in Italy, Madeira, and Valencia as well. Until then, see you next time.